foreign military bases in Africa. We do hope that in a few years' time, those military bases will be a thing of the past because these military bases are actually a source of conflict. Thank you. Yes, greetings, everyone. That was fantastic. And of course, um, uh, either we accept the fight or remain steps forever. So, my dear kings and queens, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, yesterday there was a debate of the African Union chairperson candidates uh, to discuss some issues concerning about our mother country, the Africa, and how they are going to uh, solve those challenges. Among of the challenge that was uh, raised uh, in the question asked me to those candidates is the issue of um, security, peace and security in the continent of Africa. But one of the uh, candidates uh, explained very well, all of them explained very well, but uh, this one uh, from Madagascar. Uh, praised uh, and supported uh, the steps taken by Burkina Faso uh, and Mali, also Niger, uh, to close and uh, to expand all these uh, foreign military base in the continent of Africa. And at uh, the beginning, you heard what he said. And of course, even yesterday, I shared the video about uh, what he said. But all in all, uh, today I want to share one thing. Uh, do you see? that Africa, we are going to close this foreign military base in the continent of Africa, or African Union is going to support uh, the closure of all foreign military base in the continent of Africa. Because I see uh, that African Union itself is being sponsored by those who have installed uh, military base here in the continent of Africa. Do you see the, the coming chair uh, person will support or will push the agenda of closing all foreign military base in the continent of Africa. Because, uh, as I said here, that uh, the African Union that we have today is being sponsored by the Western countries, whether it is European Union or America. So, do you see uh, the coming chair is going to have a power to close or to shut down all of those um, military bases? But and if not, and if yes, uh, if not, what can we do to make sure that uh, these bays are going to be closed? Because as we heard, uh, these uh, military bays are the ones who cause uh, conflict in the continent of Africa. And of course, I asked yesterday that how can we bring peace? How can we silence the gun in the continent of Africa? Why we Africans, we are not the manufacturers of these guns. So those who are manufacturing these guns are those who are beneficiaries of uh, guns in the continent of Africa and of course there are those who are supplying and selling weapons in this continent of Africa because uh, we, uh, the business of weapons uh, make a lot of money to those who are manufacturers so how are we going to uh, silence the guns and also to close this uh, military base in the continent of Africa especially this foreign military base in the continent of Africa. Of course, we have seen um, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and also uh, recently Chad has succeeded. But how about other countries? How about other nations? Uh, in, uh, in all candidates, um, I found uh, only elders, uh, many of them are above 50. But do you think uh, we need aged leaders in the African Union? Oh, also we need even young blood you know there's something that africans maybe i don't know uh how we, we see these things um young people are those who are bringing changes always look today we are talking about the issue of burkina faso we are praising and we are appreciating saluting and um appreciating what captain Ibrahim Traoré is doing but look at the age of captain Ibrahim Traoré. what's the age of captain Ibrahim Traoré? That is something. So you see, even I think in the African Union, for African Union to move forward, we need a young or oh, new blood in the um, in in the position of African Union chair. So we need young people like who are so visionary, like Captain Ibrahim Traoré and others, to take the seat and to lead this organization. Otherwise, our elders, many of them who are. I'm not challenging them, I'm just trying to share my thoughts. I'm sorry for those who would be uh, affected by my words. Uh, I'm not challenging them. What I want to say, we need also young, uh, young, young men and women 
in this position because for many times you find that only elders are those who are, are, co are contesting in this position and many of them are tired uh, they are so tired they are tired in po uh, politics so they find a place where they can relax and they find the chair of or the position of the African Union chair so we want someone who is fresh uh, the ages of 30s 40s who can come and learn the organization because uh, many of our elders uh, they have done many things they have uh, they have uh, served in different positions. So sometimes you see there's something uh, that maybe we are not, we lack as other people of Africa. Why don't we find the young generation to give them the chance to lead this organization? And of course, I'm sure if uh, we can give this position to the young men and women, I, I hope uh, the young can learn properly because we have seen the example of uh, Captain Ibrahim Shah. And if we go back to the history, let us ask yourself, what the age of Kwame Nkrumah at that time? What the age of Mwalim Julius Kambalagi Nyerere at that time? What the age of Modibo Keita? What the age of Thomas Isidore Sankara? What the age of uh, of Nelson Mandela? What the age of, uh, uh, of course, Kamaha Abdel Nasser of uh, Egypt? What the age of Hamed Ben Bela? Uh, of Algeria at that time when they fought for independence they were young so I think uh, Africans we need to find young people in the position of African Union chair uh, for, uh, for Africa to move forward we need I think uh, new blood and fresh blood of course uh, so uh, I'm not challenging those who are contesting I accept them they are good leaders they can, they can, learn, they can learn the organization very smooth and of course they can bring changes but also we want also to see uh, the new generation because many of our leaders have been served in different positions so I don't see that they are going to add uh, something new and of course as I said at the beginning of health, um, our organization is being sponsored by the Western power uh, so um, I think uh, always they will try to undermine uh, because those who feed you always control you so they will not accept the coming new chairperson to support the closure of their military base here in the continent of Africa. Uh, you know one thing I, I noted uh, last week you, uh, you heard the claim of Uganda that the US uh, spying plane passed your in, in its sky um, where uh, there's a fear that maybe the plane captured some image and photos on the strategic areas of minerals but do you think uh, uh, that plane came from Washington or oh, it came from uh, within Africa where US has a military base so you see those bases are operating here in the continent of Africa those bases are not operating in Washington or in Paris no those bases are established in the continent of Africa to monitor and to make sure that Africa is being under control and that's what's happening right now so and that's why you see the candidate has suggested to close all these uh, foreign military bases and of course uh, as I said Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger has succeeded in, in the charge of course but what can we do as the people of Africa to make sure that we can close these military bases you know my dear kings and queens on the issue of peace and security uh, in the continent of Africa, one month ago, I suggested and I, I proposed that we need uh, all military leaders. And one, one thing that is so good in Africa, we have presidents or leaders who are uh, soldiers. For instance, we have uh, President Yuri Kaguta Museven, he's a soldier. We have uh, President of Rwanda, President Paul Kagame, he's a soldier. If you go to West Africa, you find Mamadou Dumbuya. Of Guinea is a soldier. You come to Sahel, you find um, President of uh, Burkina Faso, Captain Traore, a soldier. If you come to Mali, the same, uh, Simigoita General, uh, Simigoita, a soldier. If you come to um, to Niger, you find also General Abdelman Chan. If you go to Chad, you find uh, is a young soldier there 
So, and in other places, I think even the president of uh, Sierra Leone is a soldier. So, we have generals and soldiers in uh, leadership position in the continent of Africa. I said, why don't these soldiers or these generals uh, having a meeting on the issue of peace and security in the continent of Africa? Uh, I suggested that because President Museveni is uh, the herder, he can convince others because others are young. For instance, Captain Ben Chao is too young uh, to present him seven. So seven can uh, collect all of them, can invite them in Kampala or in Tebe, and having a strong conversation about the issue of the peace in this continent. I hope these soldiers can come with solutions on the issue of peace and security. Even the solution will not solve uh, the whole challenge, but at least they will come with. Uh, suggestions on what are we going to do as the people of Africa to make sure that we are going to have peace uh, and security in our mother country, Africa. So, uh, and of course, you have seen, for instance, um, in Sahel, those soldiers or leaders came together to form their own alliance, the alliance of Sahel states. But that is not enough because we have seen uh, gun being crying in other places. We have conflict in uh, Sudan, we have conflict in Somalia, we have conflict in northern Mozambique, we have conflict in um, in northern Nigeria with Boko Haram in the Sahel region there, there is uh, insurgent, Democratic Republic of Congo is not at peace. So how can our leaders who are soldiers can come with solutions? And of course, uh, I think if they can decide to come together, uh, to find solutions. I think they can come with uh, some suggestions and solutions on how we are going to fight and to bring peace in the continent of Africa. The same to those who are economists. Uh, we have leaders who are economists. I think even them, they must come together, sit down and find solutions on the issue of economy in the continent of Africa. But I'm talking about the issue of peace uh, and security in the continent of Africa. So I think if our leaders uh, can decide, those who are soldiers, for instance, as I mentioned, them seven, President seven, President Kagame, President Traole, Mamadou Dumbuya, if they can come together, I hope they can come up with uh, solutions. The problem that we have always, and I will continue to address this issue, that Africans, we don't uh, work together. That's the problem. You find President Museven is working himself, the same to maybe President Kagame, President Dumbuya, Captain Traore. Of course, those who are in Sahel are trying to work together. But we wish to see our leaders working together. And that's the joy of this continent and the joy of the people of, uh, of, of Africa, to see our leaders are coming together to address the challenges and to find solutions of the challenges facing our mother country. And I hope uh, we can come with solutions. You know, one day I've been sitting and asking myself why our resources are being taken away. That those who say that Africans who don't have technologies, Africans who don't have capital, Africa we don't this and that, we don't have energy, but that is not true. The problem of Africa is not about energy, it's not about capital, it's not about technologies or knowledge. The problem of Africa is this unit. The problem of Africa is division. So these divisions among us are the things that are undermining everything that we have. We, can work, we cannot work together. We cannot trade each other. You see, we cannot have free movement of people and goods if we, can, we can't, we, we, are, we are still divided. So we are still under colonial uh, umbrella to think that uh, you are Ugandan or you are Tanzanian or you are a Ghanaian, something like that. We don't see each other as brothers and sisters, you see? And one thing, uh, the continent is full of religious people, and the religious people are always telling us that uh, God created maybe two, 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 two people, uh, men and women. So all of us, we are coming from a uh, single source. Uh, so you can see, but all in all, <laughs> my dear kings and queens, uh, when it comes for Africans, to work together, we don't see each other as brothers and sisters, as relatives, we see each other as enemies. And that's why you see, 
we have these challenges. But look at, at the Europeans. When they want something, they come together. If they want to invite someone, they come together. And that's what they are doing. They know the importance of unity. But we Africans, we are still struggling to understand the importance of unity. I think it needs political wills uh, from our leaders. And of course, it needs uh, our unity. Uh, on the issue of the energy, of course, you heard our leaders, uh, our candidates, sorry, uh, talking about the issue of energy. And of course, you may wonder uh, the continent with all these full of uh, potentials in terms of starting with solar, come to geothermal, come to um, uranium, come to hydro. But we are still struggling with the issue of um, energy. Why don't Africans? Or the, our leaders come together to address and solve these challenges. You know, I don't know what's happening to our leaders. They don't see the importance of coming together. Because we find we have hingered up in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Maybe Congo has a conflict, or maybe Con Congo is being controlled by others. Let us leave us with Yes, we have Niger, uranium in Niger. Yes, we have um, oil almost everywhere. We have oil in Nigeria, we have oil. Uh, in natural gas in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Uganda, we have oil in uh, South Sudan, we have um, oil in Angola, in natural gas, we have uranium in Namibia. If we uh, came together, the people of Africa, or tried to come together, that we have these resources, let us come together and strategize how we are going to uh, to use these resources to produce enough electricity. And of course, maybe countries will contribute some money to land some projects. And from there, uh, energy and uh, electricity can be produced and will be supplied to the whole or some areas where the energy is being uh, required, of course, for manufacturing. From there, I think we can start industrializing our continent. But we find our leaders crying and lamented about the issue of the shortage of energy. Why do we have these resources? Why don't we come together? Say, from now and then, we are going to use our uranium in Niger. Niger, you are going to be uh, the main producer of electricity by, by, by using uranium. So we sponsor everything we do. We will su we'll support this and this. So that after producing electricity will be supplied from Niger to some countries or to country A, country B, country C. Then from there we will solve the challenges of electricity in those countries. And from there those countries will be uh, have enough electricity and starting industrialization. So you see it is very, very, very simple. The problem that we have, as I said many times, Africans, we don't like to work together. And of course... Um, I think and that's why I'm saying we need the new generation in the leadership, the generation that will see the importance of coming together. You know, um, our founding fathers have the idea. They didn't implement, of course, they tried to come up with uh, African Organization of African Union, OAU, at that time. But they tried to, 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 to settle or to set something uh, to the continent. Then this generation, we have the duty uh, to accomplish uh, the journey started by our founding fathers. So we have the African Union. Yes, it is, African Union is not uniting the people. Uh, we don't have uh, one government. Uh, still, we have these visas. People are, are struggling to move from one country to another. So you see, so why don't uh, this generation say, okay, our founding fathers failed to bring the countries or the continent into a single country, but they, are, they, they have succeeded to have the, uh, the Organization of African Union today, uh, African Union, of course, um, AU. So this generation, let us achieve borderless continent. We, we will remain with our territories, uh, president will be there, but one thing we are going to achieve is to have a single, uh, I mean, we have to, to allow free movement of people uh, and goods. So if you move from country A to country B, you will not be asking about the, the issue of visas. So uh, maybe that is difficult. Let's talk about the issue of currency. Let us uh, formulate our own currency. You see, let us having a single currency, 
we have failed to have borderless continent, we have failed to have uh, one government, but let us having a single currency. If that is difficult, let us come to the issue of um, to the issue of uh, one army. Yes, we have failed to have single currency, we have failed to have uh, one government, we have failed to have borderless continent, we have failed to remove visas. So let us have a single army, standby army, uh, that we fight uh, or we try to make sure that things is going well on the ground. It is possible, but what have we achieved? You look nothing. Yes, yes, we are talking about continental free trade area. We are going to achieve, but still, I see uh, implementation will be difficult. Yes, we have started to implement, but I see the division is going to be the obstacle of implementation of the uh, African uh, continental free trade area because still there's no free movement of people and goods. People are being asked for visas, and infrastructures are not good. So I think. There's something we need to do as the people of especially this generation. You know, every generation has mission, but I don't see the mission of this generation. And that's why I always I'm trying to ask some questions. And I come to this platform to share with you uh, on how we can change uh, the things on the ground. Uh, of course, everyone has been uh, has a, a duty to change, not only leaders. This, this is not the, the task of the, uh, the leaders only. It is the task of every African how are we going to change things on the ground and what is our purpose uh, as this generation in the continent of Africa. So my dear kings and queens, I'm trying to share my thoughts on the issue of um, uh, on the question being and answers asked by so my dear kings and queens, let us not speak for too long. Those are just my opinions from what I heard from our candidates but on all uh, those candidates are so better and they will learn uh, anyone who will be elected. I think we do better for and you will bring, bring changes in this continent uh, because I see they have focus but all in all let us wait and see what would happen and how and who could be elected as the new uh, chairperson of the African Union. Thank you.